there are too many books out there to read and not enough time. So there's definitely not enough time to be reading books that I'm not enjoying. This year I tried to get even better about choosing when to DNF books, meaning did not finish, sitting them down when I'm not enjoying them. Last year there were 17 books I DNF'd, this year there were 20. I'm gonna be telling you about all of them, why I DNF them, and if I'm ever gonna be picking them back up again. First up we have The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. I have only read a couple Agatha Christie's. In fact, now that I say that, I don't know if I've really read more than one. I know I've read and then there were none. Don't really know if I've read any more or if I've just seen adaptations of her things in movies. But this was one that intrigued me, that sounded interesting, that I wanted to check out. So I was reading it back in January and unfortunately it was incredibly boring and I had no interest in reading any more of the story. I thought this was gonna be quirkier, more fast paced. The idea behind it is there's a killer who's killing people down the line of the alphabet so people whose names begin with the letter a then b then c then d and so on and so forth and the detective is trying to figure out who was killing these people and why i think i ended up looking up the explanation for this one online once i decided to dnf it only like probably 30-ish pages into the story and i can't even remember what the explanation was so i don't feel bad about sitting this one down and i have no intentions of picking it up again in the future next is an essay collection i read called the collected schizophrenias which i really tried to get into but it was just too dry for me to really get fully into it. It kind of felt like reading a textbook. Through these essays, the author is talking about her own journey towards her diagnosis with schizoaffective disorder and talks about the mental health industry as a whole, how diagnoses go missed or misdiagnosed, how the criteria that define mental health disorders is constantly changing and evolving. So sometimes labels may not even be effective for certain people with their own personal journeys and just explores all of this around schizoaffective disorders. This is a topic that I'm very interested in, but just the writing of this one was not pulling me in. I did end up finding some other books that I want to read from reading this one. So this is potentially a text that I'll go back to in the future once I feel a little bit more familiar with some of the concepts and maybe I would try on audiobook to try to get into it more that way. But when I was reading it at the time, it was just not that enticing of a language that was being used and it was really hard for me to get through. So this one ends up being a maybe, maybe one day I'll return to it or maybe not, but it's still sticking out on my shelves so I can always pull it back out if I ever want. Next we have You Have Me at Ola. This is a romance book about this telenovela actress who is developing this romance with her co-star. I didn't read too much of this one. I just wasn't really feeling the characters and the chemistry between them. I'm not the biggest romance reader anyway, so if I do pick up a romance, I have to be really invested in the characters and the dynamics between them. And this one just wasn't doing it for me. So this is going to be one that I will not be picking up again in the future. Another romance on my list is One Night at the Island. This was a book that I ended up getting through the library, I think, on the Libby app. And I got 50% through the story. And then I think my hold just went out and I just didn't like the story enough to try to renew it or try to get it again to read the second half of the story. This is another romance where I just wasn't feeling the chemistry between the characters. It's a story about this woman and man who accidentally double book this cottage out on this island. It's like an Airbnb type situation and they both end up renting it at the same time because they use different platforms or something. And the man was like either recently divorced with his family or potentially even still married. I can't totally remember, but I don't know. I just wasn't really vibing with this one. And this is not one I'll be picking back up in the future. Next we have Manhunt. This was a horror book that came out this year. I can't even really remember what this one was supposed to be about. Something sort of apocalyptic, something warlike, something kind of dystopian. I was very excited for this one and then it came out and I started hearing a lot of negative reviews and a lot of particular things being thrown around about why people didn't like it. That didn't sound very exciting to me. And then I started it, I read a couple chapters and I could just see coming to life all the things that people were saying, that it was an especially violent book, it was super sexually explicit or something. I don't know, it just felt very gritty and gritty books just aren't really my thing. So this is one that I do not see myself picking back up in the future. Next we have An Honest Lie and I wanted to like this. I really did. I want to be redeemed with Taryn Fisher's stories because I think she has good concepts and I think she has interesting fast-paced writing but usually the endings of her books are just not my favorite but for this one I thought it was really slow and I just really didn't care about what was happening in the story. I don't even remember quite how much I read of this one but I think it was a good chunk of it maybe like the first 33% of the story 
story. This is another book where terrible reviews were coming out for it after it came out. It's another cult book. I can't remember the exact circumstance of the story, but a woman's like going to Vegas with a group of women and she's got a mysterious past, thinks she was part of a cult. And now there's like these threats to her current life. At the beginning of 2022, there were just so many cult books coming out. So this was just not sticking out to me. It was already getting horrible reviews and I already have a history of not loving Taryn Fisher's stories. So this is another one that I don't think I'm gonna be picking back up in the future. Next we have The Sentence, which is a little bit of a different book for me. It's a little bit more literary fiction. There is this woman who is working at this bookstore and there's a ghost haunting the bookstore. And this story takes place around 2020-ish from what I remember. I didn't read a whole lot of it, but I just wasn't getting really pulled into the writing style of it. I feel like if I had an audiobook, I might be able to enjoy this one a little bit better. So this is one that I'm not fully writing off yet. This is a maybe for me because I do think the concept were interesting and this is a highly praised book a lot of people have said really great things about it so this is potentially one that i would be revisiting in the future next we have the latecomer this is from the same author of the plot which i did enjoy quite a bit when i read that in the past year or two whenever that came out this one i was reading it as an arc and it's very long and it's very dry and it's very slow and the font on the pages was very tiny and i was just not in the mood to read something like this this one also reminded me of another book i had read earlier Earlier, the Sherry Lapina book, Not a Happy Family. It's kind of similar setup to that. Where you're following this family and there's these strained relationships. I think someone dies. I don't fully remember. It has something to do with IVF as well. I remember that being a part of it. I'm not talking highly about it, but this is one I would potentially revisit and retry because I didn't give it much of a shot the first time I picked it up. I only read one to three chapters, really did not start much of it at all. I just wasn't in the mood for a read like that at the time. And it was also unfortunate because the book wasn't published yet, so I couldn't get an audio book to help me through the story. So I think now that the book has been published, if I could pick up an audiobook, I would give this one another shot and see if maybe I enjoy it more the second time. Next we have The Monster of Ellen Haven. This was a random one that I picked up off of Pingo Books and I really just liked the cover of it and it was a novella so I decided to pick it up. It looked interesting. I think I was reading it for a readathon at the time and I don't typically DNF novellas because they're just so short that I usually just push through and finish it even if I'm not liking it but this one I just wasn't in the mood for and again I think I was in a readathon. I know I was vlogging it at least so I didn't feel like I had the time to not enjoy by reading and so I decided to put that one down halfway through. This is more of a fantasy horror than I was expecting and thinking back to it, it has a lot of atmosphere that I typically enjoy. It feels very gothic. It sort of feels like a Dracula or Frankenstein type story. And I'm not really planning on ever picking this back up. In fact, I don't even know if I still have it on my shelves or if I unhauled it. And you know what? I was going to say maybe I'll pick it back up in the future, but if I wasn't enjoying it, I'm just going to trust my instincts. I wasn't enjoying it and I don't plan on picking it back up in the future. Next, we have A Certain Hunger. And this is a book that I was hearing really rave reviews about. It sounded really interesting. A lot of my friends were really loving it. It's about this woman who is a food critic and a can and so I was very intrigued by that. The cover is very interesting. But once I started reading it, I just was having such a terrible time being in this woman's head. This is very stream of consciousness writing. It's very claustrophobic. I just didn't like the writing style of it at all all. I ended up getting halfway through this one. I was even listening to the audiobook. I think I even bought the audiobook specifically to help me with the story and I still couldn't even finish it. This is one that I'd like to say maybe I will try again because I've heard so many people give it great reviews but because I didn't like the writing style I just don't think that's something that I'm going to be able to get past and I just don't think it's worth me picking up again. Next we have Kill River. This is a book that I didn't give too much of a chance to to be honest. I think I read this in a try a chapter video where I try a chapter and if I don't like the first chapter I un haul the book. Nope, I was wrong. I was getting this book confused with Kill Creek and I went on a whole tangent about Kill Creek and I was just being wrong. I was supposed to be talking about Kill River. This is a book that I picked up as a buddy read that Marcy from Marcy Reads was hosting. It is an older book and it's an amusement park horror. And I read quite a bit of it. I almost read the first third or maybe even the first half of it. And then I just wasn't really into the story and it was moving really slow and I ended up not finishing it that month. I don't think I'm ever really going to revisit it, but I did give it a good try and it was not Kill River. Shoot, I mean, it was not Kill Creek. I'm still getting them confused. Next we have The Wasp Factory. This is a book that I was reading when I read books that were recommended on TikTok as being these disturbing books. So I was trying out disturbing horror books for the first time. And this is another one that I just didn't like the writing style. Turns out that is a big reason 
reason that can get me to set down a book is if I'm not getting into the writing style, then that really ruins my experience. And this one, I just didn't like the tone of it. You're in the head of this boy who I can't remember if he kills people or if his brother kills people or both, but it just wasn't a voice that I liked being in. I just didn't like the writing of it. It's another one that's kind of shorter, but I just couldn't force myself to really fully finish it. I can't remember if I read half of this one or almost half, but I do remember I gave it quite a fair chance and it just wasn't working out for me. So I did end up looking up the spoilers for this to see what happened and why this is such a disturbing horror book and what the twist was going to be because I heard it had this outlandish ending. And after reading that, I don't really mind that I set this book down because I don't really like the direction that the story took. So I will not be picking this one back up. I already spoiled it for myself. I didn't like the writing style and I was just not interested to pick it back up. Next we have Ghost Story. This is another book that I was reading for that video and this is an older book and it was just also very slow paced. I also had the audiobook of this one and I just expected more to be happening in it. I also don't know if it would fully be a full disturbing horror book or if it's just a horror book that maybe has like a little bit of disturbing things in it. It didn't feel like a great fit for the video. It was really slow. I wasn't really interested in it and this is another one that I think I looked up the spoilers for and I kind of vaguely remember some of the things that were explained with what happened. I don't totally remember it but I don't really have interest in picking it back up so this one will not be coming back into my life. Next we have Stay Awake. This was a thriller that came out this year that sounded really interesting. You're following this woman who wakes up and she has Stay Awake written on her arm. She keeps losing her memories. She, someone's after her. She doesn't know what's going on. It sounded like it was going to be fun, kind of weird, maybe kind of sci-fi, fast-paced, exciting, memory loss. It just sounded like something that'd be interesting to me but I read up to the halfway point and I just didn't care where the story went at that point. So I did have someone spoil this for me and tell me everything that happens. And after that, I also didn't really care that I missed out on the story. I just wasn't really enjoying it. Felt like it was really repetitive. It just wasn't really what I thought I was going to be getting out of that type of story. So this is another one that I will not be picking back up. Next we have The Lioness. I read this one in a video where I was reading books that a psychic recommended to me. I had psychics recommend me books in a couple different ways. That was one of my favorite videos I ever made. It's very fun. I will link it below. If you missed that one, definitely make sure to check it out because that was a really fun concept and it's something I could maybe even see myself doing again. However, with this book being on this list, you can tell it didn't go so good. I ended up DNFing that one halfway through. This is like this survival type thriller is how it's pitched. You're following these famous actors back in the 70s, somewhere around that time. And they're going out on this excursion in the desert in Africa and they end up getting captured. And so you're following what happens from there. There's a lot of different POVs in the story. And I haven't seen many people read this book, but the people that I do see read this book tend to really like it. So I thought maybe it would be like a hidden gem, maybe something I would really enjoy, but I just wasn't loving it. It is written more like a literary fiction. It's very slow. You're getting lots of different POVs and just the pacing of how things start to be laid out in the story. I just wasn't really fully enjoying. I never ended up looking spoilers up for this one or figuring out how it ends. I am kind of intrigued still. I think about it sometimes, but I don't really see myself picking this book back up in the future because it was just kind of slow and boring and I don't know I would just rather spend that time reading something new that could be better than going back to something that I know I wasn't really loving. But that whole psychic video didn't go that way so again check it out maybe I had an actual five star read in there. <laughs> Next we have What Moves the Dead. This is the latest T. Kingfisher book that came out this year and I ended up reading half of this one and just not liking it at all. I felt like nothing was happening in the story. This one is inspired by The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe and I liked the writing style and the atmosphere and just the gothic infusion of it all was very nice but the story was very boring to me and so I only read half of it and then I put it down and it was the month that it was Kayla's book club pick for the Literally Dead book club Books and Lala and then I ended up watching the live show. I think I watched the spoiler section. I can't remember anything about how the book ends but this is not one that I plan on revisiting even though it's short even though I already read half of it. It's just not one that I really care about. So I'm not going to be picking this one back up. Next we have The Enigma of Room 522. I think it's 522. Maybe it's 622. You'll see the book cover right here. This is an arc that I had that looked really interesting. It is about this writer who is at this fancy resort in the Alps, I think. And there's this mysterious room in the hotel. I think someone dies. There's a mystery being solved. But the interesting thing about it that I thought would be interesting is that it's like a metafiction book the main character in the story is the same name as the author of the book. So I thought that 
that would be interesting and have a cool play in the story. The reason I ended up DNFing this one was to do with like the writing style and the pacing. You end up getting this other perspective of this other thing going on. I don't even know what it was, but I just wasn't really liking it. And then I went to seek out reviews for this book and it was getting a lot of bad reviews. So I just decided it probably wasn't gonna be worth my time because it is a longer book too. And this is not one that I plan on picking back up. Next is Little Eve. I picked this one up this year because it was being republished by Tor. It was originally published back in 2017, 2018-ish time, and I never heard of it until it was getting republished this year. So I so I thought it'd be fun to pick it up. I love everything else I've read from Katrina Ward, her other two novels. And so I thought this would be a good time, but the writing of it was just really weird. I didn't even know what was happening in the beginning. Very confusing to me. Maybe that was because I was reading it as an ebook, and maybe that in some way affected my experience other than being able to like flip through the pages of a physical copy and trying to like figure out what perspective I'm reading, what's happening, the language in it was weird. Everything about it was just kind of weird. I really didn't give this one much of a chance because it was just strange and I just wasn't in the mood for trying to spend time figuring that out at the time. However, because I have loved two other novels from Katrina Ward, this is definitely a book that I see myself revisiting in the future that I am planning on picking back up and giving another try, maybe with an audiobook, maybe with a physical copy, maybe just spending some time to figure out what I'm reading. Maybe I was just having a weird week when I tried to read it before. I don't know, but I definitely plan on giving this one another shot in the future. Next we have Dark Stars, which is an anthology of short horror stories. These are interesting to DNF because I did read several stories throughout the collection, kind of popping around to authors I was interested in reading those stories. Because this is an anthology of all the stories being from different authors, and there's not really a huge overarching theme between them. Other than that, they're all like monster type stories, sometimes human monsters, sometimes not human monsters. I just didn't feel an obligation to keep reading ones because I wasn't really enjoying really any of the stories that I was reading in the collection. So it just didn't intrigue me to keep picking up other ones. Maybe this is something I'll revisit in the future. Or maybe there are some authors who I wanna check out and try their short stories. If I've got time for a short story, maybe I'd still pick it up. I still have this book on my shelves so that I can pick it up if I'm ever interested in it again. So this one's a maybe, but all in all, it just wasn't really blowing me away with the short stories that I was reading. So I just decided to sit it down for a while. And finally we have It Came From The Closet, which is also an anthology of short stories that are all about horror movies. And these short stories all connect a horror movie to the author's own lived queer experience. And it reads sort of like these memoir type stories that use the horror movies as like metaphors or allegories for things going on in their lives to do with their queerness. I thought this was fantastic. Like the stories I was reading in this were so good, but because each one is tied to a horror movie and therefore includes spoilers for the horror movie, I only ended up reading the stories for movies I have already seen or were more particularly interesting to me. So it's technically DNF because I didn't read every single story in this. And I don't even know if I'm ever going to read every story in this because I don't know if I'm interested in every movie that is talked about in this. So I kind of consider it read in my mind because I did read everything I want to read of it, which was all fantastic. All of the essays were really, really good. I don't physically own it. I got the ebook through the Libby app with my library. So I do plan on getting the physical copy. And then I think having it on hand will make it more likely that I will pick it up in the future. If I see another movie, if I want to revisit something, there's like certain movies I want to rewatch and then revisit the short story, like Jennifer's Body in particular is one. That was a short story that was written by Carmen Marie Machado in the um, collection. And so I think it'd be good to rewatch the movie and reread that story. So I guess technically I am planning on revisiting this one, but it's just kind of tricky because it's based on the movies. And if you haven't seen the movies, then, you know, you probably didn't read the story. <laughs> so that is it for all of the books that I DNF'd in the year of 2022, an even bigger list than 2021. I expect that it will probably continue to grow if I keep reading more and then setting more down when I'm not interested in them. That really just helps my reading. It's really helped me let go of the pressure of finishing a book because I just do like reading a lot. I like reading quickly. If you don't and you do wanna finish every book you get or if it's important to you financially because you purchased a book and you wanna fully read it, then that's your prerogative too and that's totally fine. But the way I personally like to read is sitting books down if I'm not enjoying them so I can spend my time on books that I am enjoying more. There's also probably part of just having a platform where I want to talk to you guys about books and I would rather spend my time talking to you about books that I'm enjoying instead of books that I'm not enjoying, which may make this video concept seem kind of weird. But what I wanted to say <laughs> with all of these books that I DNF'd is if there's any that stand out to you that you think maybe I didn't give a good chance or maybe if I try to get into a different format, I'll really enjoy it. Maybe it's something you love 
loved. Maybe it was one where I just said I wasn't in the mood at the time and you think that I'm really going to enjoy it. Definitely let me know down in the comments below if any of those stand out to you that I should give a second chance coming up in 2023. Most of them are already not really on my radar anymore, but there are some that I still am in that like maybe field or I definitely do feel like I want to revisit, but I don't know how quickly I'm going to get back. So just let me know if any of those stand out to you and that could potentially impact which ones I prioritize in the future. But that is it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.